All right, guys, before we begin, let's talk about the materials that are going to be needed to create a spray painting. All right, first and foremost, guys, the most important one is going to be your health. So make sure you invest in a mask. Get a heavy duty mask. Make sure that it has filters on the side. The filters are going to be there to protect your lungs. Look how dirty these filters get after a few uses. You don't want that stuff in your lungs. So safety first, guys, get you a mask. Second, get you a magazine, any kind of magazine. It could be a clothing magazine. It doesn't matter. Get you a magazine. You're going to need that for texture, to create terrains, to create different effects. Different size bowls. Yeah, you heard me, guys. Look, you can get everyday household items. This is a cup. It's got a sharp edge to it. It's not, it's not going to cut you. It's not that kind of sharp. It's just, it doesn't bend inward. It doesn't do this little number. It just comes out nice and straight. This is what you're looking for, guys. It'll help you create better planets with these. So make sure you get different sizes as there's different size planets out there. This will actually help you create the illusion of depth. All right, different straight edges. Guys, this is a 24-inch straight edge. Very large. Different sizes, I said. So, you know, you got, I think this is like a 4-inch, 3-inch, and a 2-inch. Different sizes. This is going to help you create some water, uh, some starbursts. This is, the straight edges are very vital to create different effects. My handy-dandy tools. Those are the Spricasso tools, guys. This is the one I had specially made for us. And, guys, it's got a nice 45-degree angle to it. So you can create different terrains. You could create little space castles. Uh, grids with it, fine details. This is very useful. You can get these at my website. This is a soft tip spray castle tool. You can also get this at the website. This is used mostly to create terrains, uh, some very realistic looking water effects with it as well. Guys, you don't have to buy it from my website. Get you a popsicle stick, cut it, nice 45 degree angle, and it does the exact same thing. So you guys, look at that. You guys don't have to go to my site. You can make your own. Um, sea sponge. Guys, this is very, very useful for creating uh, plant life, for creating different effects when it comes to the water, uh, clouds. Uh, this is a tool that we're going to get more in depth as we proceed into beginner, as we, leave in, as we leave beginner and enter intermediate level spray paintings. Sea sponge. You're going to need some masking tape. Masking tape will help you create different frames. can help you protect certain areas that you don't want spray paint landing on. So don't get duct tape. Guys, duct tape is very harsh. It'll stick to your paint. Once you remove it, that's it. So masking tape or painter's tape. The spray castle funnel, another one of my creations. All right. The funnel is made very easily. Guys, you need, you remember those magazine sheets we talked about? Get your magazine sheet. Uh, there you go. Create you a little funnel with it. Just like that. Make sure you leave a nice opening there. I'm going to use duct tape, <laughs> but I don't intend on removing it. So get a piece of duct tape, hold it in place. Look at this. You fold this inward to hold your paint. And then you start taping it. Look how fast, how easy it is to make, guys. You have your nice little entry. You put your paint here. And it funnels it through there. So it, it allows you to create very fine details, especially when creating plant life, trees. Uh, you can actually draw in little characters. We'll get more in depth into it. But it's very important, very useful. Um, I think, oh, and your favorite brand. Guys, the most important thing, one of the most important things, your favorite brand is spray paints. We're only going to use the basics to begin. So we're going to use the blue, orange, clear coat, Guys, white, get you an extra white. We go through white and black a lot more. Uh, black, red, green, and yellow. Guys, make sure you have a nice variety of colors. And poster board. Poster board is going to be your medium. Now, I've been asked this question many, many times. What side of the poster board do I paint on? You want to do it on the glossy side, not the matted side. Listen to the difference. Yeah, see? You want to use the glossy side, guys? Why? Because the paint is able to be retained there for a little bit longer than on the matte side. The matte side is going to absorb the paint. So make sure you spray paint on your glossy side. All right, guys. I think we're ready. Uh, as you can tell, my hands do get a little messy with the spray paint. So if you guys want to prevent that, you can get vinyl gloves, latex gloves, whatever. If you want to protect your hands, I recommend it. 
Uh, if you're like me, eh, I don't really mind it a lot. I really don't. So, if you guys are ready, grab your spray paints, your materials. What do you say we begin? Hey, crew, welcome back to another Picasso tutorial. All right, in today's tutorial, we're going to do something different, something unique. As always, <laughs> we, we do a lot of unique stuff here in our, in our tutorials. So, we took a canvas and we spray painted it black, right? Just like this. Just took it and spray painted it black. What kind of canvas do I use? Okay, great question. I get this asked a lot. Lately, I have been talking to a company here in Colorado that makes canvases, right? So they're going to be making the canvases for us. And they use a, split, a special type of uh, acrylic coating on their canvas so that our spray paint is able to remain on there a little bit longer than it would with a regular canvas, which works great. So I'm going to be selling those on the website. Guys, we're going to take one of those. We're going to spray paint it black. And then we're going to begin by creating a background on it. Yeah. So we're going to use a black canvas. I'm going to use a little hot pink color that I have here. Now, what I like about this color is that it's not too fluorescent as, as you would think it would be. So you have to add a few more layers on it in order for you to be able to see it in the background. Other than that, it would dissipate into the painting. So if you want the color to be really bright, you have to get closer. See that? Okay. Well, I want it to be a cool effect like it's blending into the background. So I don't want it to just be, bam, a big purple dot in our painting. Okay. Like that. I'm going to use a little bit of orange. Remember to always pre-spray your can off on the side somewhere before spraying on your canvas. Now notice how I'm not going, I'm not getting very close onto the canvas. I just want the color to, to show up. If I get very close, you'll get something very bright like that. It's not really what I'm hoping to do, so I'm just going to tone it down a little bit there. Now remember, notice what I'm doing here. Quick sprays. Psst, 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 psst. It's not just one continuous long one. Quick sprays works better, guys. All right. Now... We're also going to need the soft tip spray castle tool. You can also get this one on our website. Now, the beauty about the soft tip spray castle tool is that it allows you to manipulate the paint in such a manner that you can smear it, you can tap into it, you can add highlights with it. It's a very nifty tool. And uh, I think you're going to see the benefits of having it here in this tutorial. So, all right, let's continue. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to get a sheet of magazine and I'm going to add some orange. Maybe with a little bit of black. You guys remember what happens when you mix black with orange? You get brown. All right, so I'm just going to use the spray castle tool here. Blend it together. And get a nice little brown color going on. See that? Now, it's not completely dark brown. And we don't want it to be completely dark brown. So we'll just tap into it. We'll create some trees here in the back. Now, here's another awesome part, guys. Notice how it's blending these colors with the colors underneath, with the black, with the uh, with the pinks that we have going on. That's exactly what we're wanting to do. Come up here, blend these a little bit more. And they're going to have some of these highlights the browns that are really going to stick out. Yeah. And that will give us our bark. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do this throughout our painting. We're just going to add a couple of them. Add one here. All right, so we went ahead and added some trees. Now what we're going to do, using the same brown that we mixed before, right here, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow. Again, guys, this can be your favorite spray paints. Um, oof, I'm running out of yellow. That's fine. I'm just going to mix those two together. It's going to give me a very nice light brown. See that? Now we can add that for highlights on certain trees. 
for example, we can add it here. That's not what I'm going to use it for, but we can add it here. You can see that nice little light orange, uh, light brown, I mean. It'll give you a nice effect of the, your sunlight hitting it. Or you can do what I was going to do with it. Up into the ground here, and let's create some terrain. What I'm doing, I'm just putting the color down and smearing it. Okay, so we're gonna keep doing this throughout our background. Look at that. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna use some orange. So I'm gonna spray some orange here on the side. A little bit of black, you guys remember that combination, it gives us brown, and a little bit of yellow. Okay, this is the combination that I'm using. Okay, so I'm just gonna tap into that. Now I'll come over here and just add some highlights. The highlights, basically, what they're gonna be doing is they're gonna differentiate where our ground is getting light from, and it's gonna help break out pieces of the terrain from other parts of the ground. See that? See, now this becomes a more distinct rock. You can come over here and do the same on this side. A little bit of highlight here. All right, let me move some of these cans out of the way. Right, so with a little bit of yellow, I'll come here and I'm just going to add on the edges. Now, this is very similar to a technique that we learned as beginners called scratching, right? And I show you that on a couple of videos. Basically, what scratching does is you take your uh, either your, your spray castle tool or your palette knife or something with a sharp edge, and you come across and you start adding these really bright, highlights right to differentiate where your ground starts curves bands see stuff like this you're able to add some very realistic looking highlights with this method scratching is good if you're a beginner guys i've said this many many times i still get a few artists that say hey take a look at this painting and the painting looks great but then you see these bright highlighted areas where they scratched off and I'm like, mm. <laughs> guys, if you're going to do something a little more advanced, uh, try experimenting with highlights. Try using this tool. Let's come by. Now, take a look at this. Notice how we're starting to shape our terrain. All right, let's move those out of the way. Over here. And then the best part about this is you can blend those paints that I added below to create little, little pieces of land that have been sliding perhaps. See that? Like that. You can smear the highlights downward, which will give you a very neat effect because it's not just like a bright highlight. It'll blend into the other colors and it'll it'll create like a little fading effect. Very easy to do. Look at this, guys. Now, you guys can't sit there and keep sending me emails telling me it's not spray paint. It's spray paint. It's just the techniques that I use. I'm a little more advanced on this one. Now, the clear coat will keep your, your paints moist, nice and wet, so that you're able to continue smearing them. See that? Right, okay. Now, notice how I'm beginning to create the water down here. I'm just going back and forth and smear, smearing some of those colors to create the water ripples. Now, the spray castle tool, the self tip tool, is very easy to clean. You just get a little bit of a. Uh, uh, this is a paper towel. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of clear coat to it. 
sometimes you don't want your paints to contaminate. What does that mean? That means when you get, uh, let's say, red, you don't want to tap red into yellow because now you get orange, right? If you don't want that, you just clean your tool. Look at that. And it looks like new. So you're able to go back at other highlights, at other textures, colors, whatever. So now I'm going to use some blue. I'm going to spray some blue here off on the side. Using the handy dandy soft tip tool, I'm going to tap into some of that blue. You know what? I'm going to add a little bit of white as well to it. And this is what it looks like. So we're going to tap into some white and blue. Get that nice light blue going on. Now, I'm just adding, I'm not covering the entire bottom part with blue. I'm just adding certain lines. Notice that, right? It's important because that gives us the effect of a reflection on the bottom. If I was to cover it all with blue, you wouldn't see any reflection. You would just see blue. So just little lines coming down. Now, if you can, you can make. Can make thicker lines of blue. That. And then you go back and remove some of that blue or blend it into the, the background so that it looks like it's a reflection. I love the way it's coming out. Look at that. Okay. Now then. wasn't too hard. I was able to create this in just a few minutes. Let's talk about another layer. What other layer do you guys think we can add to it to make it more realistic, to add um, more vitality to this thing? No? Can you think of anything? Well, I can think of a thing or two. Yeah, this is where we come in with our handy dandy sea sponge. Guys, do not use foam brushes to create tree leaves. Uh, foam brushes are great for creating hair. Yeah, if you're doing a portrait, you can create hair with it. Fantastic for hair. Uh, some fur, but for the most part, guys, this is, you're able to manipulate grass way better, way, way better with a sea sponge than you can with, with, with a sea foam, uh, with a foam brush. So I'm going to add some green, a little bit of blue into our mixture, and some black. Let me show you what that mixture is going to look like. Bam. That's it right there. You see the blue, the green, and the black. I'm going to take, actually, I'm going to take a little bit smaller. See, I work with pieces this big. Uh, this I can make it last for, for a while. So even though sea sponge can be a little expensive sometimes, it's worth it because you only need this much. You don't, you don't need to get a piece this big only to use, you know, that little portion of it. So this much, blend the colors together, and I'm just going to come in here and get with this thing. Okay. Now then, I'm going to grab some orange and spray a little bit here. It's all right if it contaminates with the other colors because we already have those colors in the background. You know what, guys? I'm going to add a little bit of clear coat. Awesome. So now then, I'm going to tap into some of this uh, pink that we have here, and I'm going to add it on some of these trees. I like how this orange that we placed down here uh, by accident, you guys remember that? Kind of gives it a, a feel like this is where the light is coming from. So I'm going to add some of that pink right here on my trees. Like the light is coming from this angle. add 
some on this side. Add a little bit more on this one. All right, now let's do another layer of, I'm thinking we need some more trees. What do you guys think? All right, for that, we're going to need our handy dandy. Dun, da, 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 spray castle funnel. Guys, a folded sheet. Sure. Let's let's do a little experiment here. Let's say you want to do your trees with a little folded sheet. Well, this can come in good when you need some quick details, uh, like branches, twigs. But I really don't like. I mean, you can use a bigger one, I suppose. But okay, look at that. First of all, I already got. Not that I care that much, but we already got dirty here. Come in and get a little branch there. Here. Background. Look at this. I'm going to use a little bit of this. Paper towel. So using the folded sheet, uh, I was able to make a mess, and I, I didn't get a whole lot of branches in there. I was able to get these two and maybe one, two right here. Uh, yeah, I, I don't recommend it, guys. You know what? How hard is it to make something like this? Not at all. So... Let me show you some. I went ahead and I created two other trees there. We're going to use some orange. We're also going to use some black. We're just going to shake it a little bit to get some of those colors to mix. And you know what? Maybe a little bit of orange, uh, yellow. Okay, so we're just going to do that little quick mixture. Now, you're going to practice off on the side somewhere just to kind of determine how much paint is going to come out. I'm going to move my canvas this way. And I'm just going to create one right here just to show you guys. All right. It's going to come out. And, I mean, look how much more paint you get out of it. Okay. Detail-wise, well, let me show you. You can create some pretty fine details. Uh, it's going to be a little hard doing it like this, but you can do it. Just, I don't have any space to move here, guys. You can create your branches. And notice that you can go from thick to thin. Very realistic looking branches. That you can make. I'll make another one so you guys can see. Yeah? So, guys, come on. Don't tell me that that little folded sheet of paper is going to get more detail than this. Now, Guys, make your funnel. All right, so that's how we make our tree. If you want to add some, some texture to your tree, you're going to spray off a little bit of black here on the side. Tap into it. And then you're just going to add it here on this side. Now, you can use the light and dark technique. You guys remember that? That's an intermediate level technique that you can use to create the effect of 3D on your trees. We're going to want to use that, yes. But for now, we want to create... All this effect right here, the effect, the nooks, the grain, the grain of, of the wood. And it's very easy to do. You just tap into some black, lay it down, and then you just manipulate it into your tree. Pretty easy, huh? All right. So we managed to create a couple more trees, another layer of trees. This one's obviously a little bit closer to us. I'm going to add some more dark to it. Just, I really want that, that, that effect of the, the, the bark of the tree and the texture to really come through. Okay, let's take another look at it. Look at that. All right. So far, it's coming along. We're going to add another layer of highlights before we move forward with our painting. All right, 
so we want I really like this glow that we did here by accident right and so this glow is coming out and it's highlighting the rest of our painting so I mixed a little bit of our pink and our yellow that's gonna create an orange Right, so we're going to add a little bit of that color back here on, on this side of the face. It's going to give us a nice little glow effect. It feels like the tree is reflecting some of this color that it sees in the back. And like we did before, we're going to blend the highlights into the, the tree itself like we did with the dark area here. Yeah, you're gonna add your highlights. One end of the tree. And then you're gonna tap, 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 tap. And you're gonna kind of blend it into the, the colors below. So what we're gonna do guys, is that what ahead and I added a quick little layer of uh, flowers. How do you do that? Well, very, very easily. I added a little bit of yellow right here. Do that. You tap into it. Now, there is some orange there. There might be a little bit of uh, paint contamination, which is okay because it won't give you just a bright orange or a bright yellow. It'll give you a nice little mixture of the two. So let's take a look at what this is going to look like. See that? Just add some here and here. And notice how you can see the orange there. It's a nice little fade between orange and yellow. So that's what we're going to want to do. And we're doing that. You remember that grass strands that we added earlier? That's exactly where you want to do this. I'm going to add some red. Yeah, create some little red flowers. Now, it's not just going to be red. I'm going to, I'm going to add some red and just a little bit of yellow on the side. Now, what you're going to try and want to do is get in between the red and the white. Just like that. I need more white. There. Now, that's going to give you a nice little... It's not going to be like quite bright red flowers, but it's going to be a little transition between pink and red. Right? Because if you add white to red, you get pink. Absolutely. He's going to add some reds here. All right, guys. For this next part, I'm going to use some black. I'm going to make a big tree. I'm going to use plenty of black. I'm going to use some of our pink. I don't know if you guys can see the color in there. Mixing on and about. Pretty cool, huh? All right. So I'm thinking, I don't know, I think I'd like to add a big tree right here. I'm debating it because I want to, because I want to show you guys this cool technique. But at the same time, I really enjoy this background. But you know what? That's some of the sacrifices that we have to do. If we want to create a realistic looking painting. We have to create sometimes the illusion that there's trees closer to us. And so we have to overlap some of the layers that we've created on the bottom below. That was pretty fast. All right. Well, let's try that. I'm using the funnel and I added plenty of black. This is going to give us plenty of color that needs to come in here and create our tree as thick as we want. Hit and I added with our pink. Just a little bit of pink on our funnel. Let's see, let's test out how much it's going to come out. Let's test out the glow. Not enough. All right. Need to add some more. Look. There we go. Okay. So now I'm just going to add a quick little streak of pink here. This is going to be our highlight. Now, well, we added our layer. Now we're going to come in with our stick and tool. We're going to blend it into the tree. Not completely dissipate it, guys. We just want to add a few lines into it.
Okay. Love it. Cool. So one tree down. I think we're going to add a couple of more. Maybe not. Maybe we'll add a nice little thing here on the bottom. How you say? Well, you know what? We're going to use our pink again. I'm going to spray off a little bit of pink here on the side. And then I'm going to add some black. I'm going to spray a little bit of black here too. This is, get, this is going to give us a nice little wet uh, spray so that we can tap into some bright colors. And when we add it on there, look at this. Be able to create some very natural looking highlights. See that? So you can actually do some yellow too. Any type of bright color that you can bring onto the black mixture. It'll give you a very psychedelic looking effect. So what I'm going to do is going to add some more black here on this part. And then I'm going to tap into some bright colors, whether it's orange, yellow, pink. Orange looks really nice as well. Now we have to work fast because spray paint dries rather quickly, which is spray paint. I love spray painting, first of all, I, I really do. One of the things that attracted me about spray painting is how fast you can get a painting done in just a few minutes, you know? However, one of the things that makes it more complicated is uh, it dries rather quickly. So while an oil artist can sit there and work on a painting for a month, wait for it to dry, and then come back and add some more, we don't really have that advantage. We have to work fast before the paint completely dries. And after it completely dries, you only have about eesh, six to eight hours to be able to work on it. If you've ever tried to work on a painting that you've considered done before, and you come in and you start adding new layers to it, first thing you're going to see is what? You're going to start seeing the painting shrivel up. Yeah, because it's going to get the paint layers underneath moist again, and it's going to want to revert to its original liquid, uh, you know, state. However, it won't be able to, so it's just going to shrivel up. Yeah, so this is tricks of the trade. I'm going to add a little more. And perhaps I'm going to mix some purple here on the bottom. And notice, guys, how easy it is. I'm just using the soft tip spray castle tool. Now, I do have some purple. I I like to mix my own purple. First of all, guys, I, I make, you know, I blend my blue and my red together and I make my own purple. But for the sake of this video, I went ahead and I got just a little bit of purple. And I'm going to smear some right here on the bottom. This is going to make the painting really stand out. Purple is a very overpowering color. And a little bit of clear coat. Get our paints nice and moist, nice and wet. Now here's another thing. I've heard a lot of people say that they use uh, non-glossy paints and that it works really good. And yeah, guys, I've been doing this for 17 years. If you use matted paints, they're not going to work as well with this technique. Uh, one of the first things you're going to start seeing is uh, they're going to start cracking. First of all, once you start mixing paints together that are matted, they start to crack, like literally crack. They don't blend very well with one another, uh, especially since we use a lot of our neutral colors, which is what? Gloss black, gloss white. Well, when you have a matted color and you put 
put it down and you add other colors on top of it, it's going to turn into a paste. The mixture of glossy colors, even if it's semi-gloss, as long as it's semi-gloss, the drying agent that it has inside, it'll keep your painting uh, nice and wet so that you're able to manipulate it, so that you're able to create certain effects like the ones that we're creating down here. So guys, do yourself a favor, get you some gloss or semi-gloss paints and use those. Even if you use and they're not taking this under consideration. If you, if you use like paints like Montana spray paints or all these tagging spray paints, some of them, the drying chemical that it has on them, make them a semi-gloss. All right, so let's see. This is what we're coming up with so far. What do you guys think? I like it. I see a nice little terrain here on the bottom. I can see the water on top. I think I'd like to add a little bit more blue mixed with some white. Now the white, I'm going to put it off on the side so that I'm going to be able to see it. Now the white is not completely white. It's being mixed with the other colors underneath. You can wait a little bit until this dries before you add your white. But I don't like doing that, even though there is a lot of white in the water, because I want the colors to mix. I, I want it to look like a reflection. I want the colors to be nice and mixed blend together. If you want the white to really stand out, you can, like I said, you can wait, or you can just add some white on a nice clean top, clean the tool, like this, ready to go. Tap into some white, just tap, and blend it in. Now you want to leave the line where you tapped into your white. I'm going to leave that line there. See that? So that it adds like a, looks like a reflection. Awesome. All right, Cruz. So for this next part, uh, this wasn't recorded. I'm not sure why my camera didn't record it, but it doesn't matter because we just added a few quick layers. It was a grass layer, which you can see on the upper right-hand corner of our lower terrain. And then that was created with a sea sponge, quick strokes upwards, guys. I used uh, black and red. And then to create the flowers, I used red, just a few dabs of red. Now, we still have to go back and add a little bit of orange on top of those. To create the tree, I used the spray castle funnel, used a little bit of black with uh, orange. And then I added the highlights on top of the tree, and with the Spricasso soft tip tool, I merged the highlights into the tree. Now what I'm doing here is I'm adding the dream technique. You guys remember that? That's when I actually get some black and fade into the painting. So I do the outer edges, and it just gives it a really neat effect. Well, I think we are done with this one, guys. One of the things about being an artist is that you always go back and kind of take a look, make sure that your lights are, are being reflected properly. Uh, maybe a little more highlights here on the trees. It's up to you. You know, the more you look at it, the more you'll be able to determine, yeah, this is a complete piece. This is not a complete piece. Uh, for example, I, I wanted to go back and add a couple more trees here. But I'm thinking, no, I think this piece is good. I think it has a lot of balance. We have your light source here. It's not very defined. It's not in your face. You don't see the starburst coming out. But nonetheless, you see where all the highlights are at. You see the nice little transition of colors that you've placed down here. I did the same technique that I did on that tree up there, down here. Uh, added a little bit of highlights here just throughout the ground. Very quick. Nothing too hard. Just added a little bit of orange. Came through with the tool and just added some random highlights. So I think this painting is done. Guys. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's tutorial. Until next time, crew, keep those cans shaking.